Hello everyone, welcome to this short video tutorial on AWS Beanstalk. If you want the detailed description, I have another video tutorial on AWS Beanstalk. Please follow that. So AWS Beanstalk is a service related to application deployment. So AWS handles the backend infrastructure in Beanstalk and you just focus on the application code and logic. This makes the entire deployment process faster and simpler. You also return full control over the AWS resources. That means you can choose the type of resources you want on your application stack and you only pay for the resource you use. AWS supports these specific platforms, Java, .NET, Node.js, Python, Ruby, Go, and Docker. The good thing is that if you are not using any of these above programming language, but you still want to use the EVS, you can configure your Docker container with whatever framework you want to leverage. And you could still find a way to support it on Elastic Beanstalk with a little bit of extra work. So what are the features of EVS? It's fast and it's simple to begin. Obviously it has reduced overall maintenance because you are only focused on the application code. It provides scalability. It provides integrated monitoring for the backend resources that is deployed when you upload your application to the Elastic Beanstalk. And then it provides some customization to your resources. What are the Beanstalk components? The first important component is application. So application is a deployable code for your web application. In other words, application is similar to the folder that you create when you want to deploy an application with all the necessary components. It has environment versions, environment configurations. The second is application version. So application version is the leveled iteration of a deployable code. That means when you launch an application, you have one specific version. If you want to make some changes, to the application after it's deployed, you created another version of the application. That application is stored in S3 as an object, as a deployable code. It can have multiple versions. Another important concept is environment. So environment is the collective term for all the AWS resources that Beanstalk provisions for you. So an environment runs the current version of the application. And one environment can have only one application at a time. But same application version can be deployed across multiple environment. For example, if you want to have a development and staging environment, you need to have that same application version, but they have to be in two different environment, like staging environment and dev environment. Next important concept is environment tier. So the tier is the first step to select when you want to launch an application in Elastic Beanstalk environment. So the environment tier is responsible for designating the applications type that will be running the environment. It also decides what resources will be provisioned by the Elastic Beanstalk for supporting the environment based on the application type. Basically, there are two environment tiers, web server environment and the worker environment tier. Web server environment is the front end piece. Client access the web server environment via URL. Then it handles the HTTP request from clients. Worker environment, it is the backend application. So it handles the backend micro jobs. Let's look at this web server environment. So the environment includes all the resources that are provisioned by the Elastic Beanstalk. It includes Elastic Load Balancing, Auto Scaling, EC2 Instances, Security Group, and all. So when a client makes request to your application through the Route 53, it redirects to the Elastic Load Balancer. And the Load Balancer then redirects the traffic to the web servers. These web servers are part of the security group, which is a firewall. These web servers are part of the auto scaling group, which helps to increase the capacity on demand or decrease the capacity when there is less demand. All of these EC2 instances runs an important software component called host manager that is responsible for deploying the application, generating the instance level events, aggregating the events and metrics for retrieval via either console or command line or API. These EC2 instances are again connected to the backend database. All these features are available in Elastic Beanstalk dashboard itself. So now let's look into the worker environment. Worker environment is slightly different and are used by applications that have backend processing tasks. So let's take the scenario where a client makes some request to the web server. These are still part of the web server environment here. So what if the client request is a time consuming and processor intensive task. If client makes another request in the meantime, the web server won't be able to process that request. So it declines that request. That's where the worker environment comes in. The worker environment will interact with the Amazon queuing service. And when you launch your worker environment, Beanstalk will create this SQS queue as part of the worker environment. So that these additional requests that are coming in to the web server, it can be passed to the SQS queue and the SQS queue pass this request on the backend to the worker. 
So this worker environment have EC2 instances that have this important piece of software installed called daemon. These daemon are responsible for pulling the messages from the SQS queue and then pass it to the backend web server, which processes the tasks and then responds back with the HTTP response. That's how worker environment comes into play to resolve the backend application tasks. This is a complete picture of web server environment here and worker environment here. So the AWS resources created for a web server environment here includes the load balancer, auto scaling group, one or more EC2 instances, security group. And the AWS resources created for a worker environment here includes an auto scaling group, one or more EC2 instances, and an IAM role that allows permission to read these messages from the SQS queue. And the other major difference is that the EC2 instance in an web server environment here has that important software component called host manager that is responsible for managing all the tasks. Whereas in EC2 instances that is in a worker environment here, it has this component called daemon that is responsible for pulling the messages from the queue. So this is it on the concept of AWS Beanstalk. 